Welcome, everyone. It's the Crypto Lark, and I'm very excited to have with me today Pong from Isego. We're here in Sydney at the Ethereum Development Conference, and we're going to be talking about some of the exciting recent updates from Omise Go. Welcome. Hey, Lark. Glad to be here. Glad to have you on, without a doubt. I mean, Omise Go is one of those projects that so many people are excited about. And I'm really excited to get to talk to you guys because, because we have the alpha release. Now, we're calling this RE. So can, can you tell us what does the alpha release actually mean for Omise Go? Sure. Um, so I guess we can maybe go a little bit more about, like, terminology and, and why we call it an alpha release. So so obviously to, to people that are more deeper into crypto, you would see, okay, this is an external testnet, right? Um, but the way that we would like to categorize our releases is with more traditional software um, releases in mind. So when it comes to software, um, an alpha release means, you know, when you, when you have a, a working uh, version of your application of your software that you would like to release out to public to get tested, to get um, real users, to get real usage, to be more informed about what this thing actually does and how it breaks. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you still have, you know, there's no promise or there's no guarantee that, you know, this thing is gonna be a polished version. It's not, it's not gonna be the final version of your application. But at the same time, we are at the stage where you would like to learn about how this thing could be used, how this um, infrastructure that we've built uh, is going to be impactful or going to be useful for any type of developers. So what it means for us, I think, uh, and for um, the, you know, the objective that, we, that we're trying to go uh, towards, which is building this, this um, massively scalable um, decentralized exchange, like mm -hmm. the value transfer sort of thing, is that we're making steps towards that and, and, and a pretty concrete steps towards, towards that I goal. think this is a very concrete step. And it's, uh, I think you said a really interesting thing there is kind of how it breaks, right? So that's, yeah. that's the important point of the alpha release. It's actually about battle testing it, really, to see where the good points are, where and where areas are that need to be improved. And that's, I think, a really important thing to point out here is that this is the, the first major step when mm -hmm. it really comes down to the wider vision of the Amisego payments network. I think that's important. Right. Yeah, things can be you know rough, still somewhat rough around the edges, right? But this is where this is how we learn. This is how we validate our assumptions. This is how you know. It's how you go ahead and build uh, better versions of software, right? By actually having real uses. Otherwise, you can just sit around, you know, and and keep building for the next five, six years, and you end up with the software that nobody could use, or with a software that you that's can right. you don't know if things are gonna break or not, right? That's right. That's right. So it's, everything's good in theory, but yes. then you actually have to test it now. Right. Obviously, something that I know the community is going to want more information about, and, and we may not have that yet because I understand this is the alpha release, mm -hmm. but staking and staking rewards. Where are we at with that in terms of any information you can give the community? Sure. So when it comes to staking, and I know that you know staking, obviously the OMG token is... Um, the, the way we represent our service, it's going to be a staking token, um, and it's still going to be a staking token. However, with where we are on the roadmap and our, and our current focus, um, our next focus is going to be, of course, polishing the alpha release of the network, but more on the um, kind of next on the milestone is, is the DEX design. And, and uh, logically, after we have uh, that sorted out, then the staking will come after. So, so in that logical step, that reducing the network, uh, focusing on the DEX, and then focus on the staking. So. Now, that DEX, this is obviously decentralized exchanges are a super important part of the future ar architecture of the entire crypto economy. Mm -hmm. Now, the Omise Go DEX, is that going to be, you know, Ethereum to Bitcoin or Ethereum to Omise Go? And what exactly is going to be exchanged? What kind of value transfer are we looking at actually happening on the OMG DEX? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, I think, I believe, in the original white paper, we do go into pretty deep uh, detail about interoperability, right? And, and to an extent, Bitcoin interoperability as well. Um, when it comes to Plasma architecture, so, so because all of our uh, tokens and all the funds are basically rooted on the main chain, so on Ethereum, the interoperability between this Plasma chain, which is DEX, which is sitting on the Plasma chain, is of course, is gonna come from Ethereum as well. Mm -hmm. So we do, uh, we will be limited and reliant on the level of interoperability that Ethereum will have with other different chains, which is actually happening already, right? You have um, 
you have wrapped Bitcoin, or you yeah. have something similar to that, where you basically are able to uh, lock up some Bitcoin and have a, a Bitcoin a version in ERC20 tokens that you can transact with, that you can transfer with. So this would be the level of interoperability that we'll be dealing with um, in terms of uh, the DEX design. Yeah, and of course, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of different cryptocurrencies that are either running some kind of implementation of the EVM or EVM compatible, and so that's the Ethereum virtual machine. And that's obviously, in terms of adding future blockchains, I think that these other blockchains are very clever because that essentially means is that everyone wants to interoperate with Ethereum, and so right. if you can actually meet that level of interoperability as another blockchain, that becomes really important now. Obviously, Plasma is a hot topic, and mm -hmm. this is something that's been under development for a while. So can you tell us at a high level what Plasma is and at what stage we are at right now with Plasma? Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's a good question. And I think maybe we might be, you should step back a little bit further and explore uh, this whole Plasma space, right? And, and of course, Plasma is a hot topic. And it's not just Omise Go that's pursuing Plasma. Um, you have Loom Network, and you have different mm -hmm. uh, types and varieties of Plasma, right? and then pursue, being pursued by each different projects. And you have Plasma Group, which is attempting to build a construct a more generalized Plasma that is easier to use by um, projects that would like to deploy their, their own flavor. Um, with that said, uh, I, I would say that for Omise Go and for general uh, Plasma implementations, we are quite further along in terms of uh, having things audited, having things uh, to a level battle tested, and have, having things, uh, having the, that design implemented and, and polished, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it's a natural progressive step in software development, especially in, in really cutting edge uh, deep tech software. So I, I would consider Plasma deep technology, right? You start off from research, uh, you start like writing the design specs, and mm -hmm. then you bring it to the actual engineers that will actually churn this out, that will create software based on this uh, specific specs. And then you take that software, uh, you, do, you go through validation process, you try it out, you put it in the real world, and you battle test it, right? Um, I, think, I think in that aspect, we're at that later stage where we're, okay, let's le release this thing and be more informed about um, what other features are missing to, have to make, to, take this and bring it to production? Um, and what are the things that are missing to do that? And what are the m potential things that this thing could break? Uh, and, and, and learning that before it happens when, when it is launched, when it is on the main end. Mm. And now something uh, interesting as well, are, I like the, word, the, the name for this, flaps. <laughs> plasma, so that's plasma apps. Obviously we have dApps which are decentralized applications. And then we have plaps. So how would a plap be different from any other kind of DAP running on Ethereum? Uh, that's, 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 that's one question, right? Um, I believe the term PLAP was coined by Kevin Fitcher, um, and uh, I have never actually used it, <laughs> the term <laughs> PLAPs yet. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the reason being, right, is, is when, when people built decentralized apps, there was this uh, almost this idea that you want to build the whole uh, application like on top of like smart contracts mm -hmm. and I think people learn pretty quickly that that's not very sustainable uh, that's not it's not very efficient way to build any sort of applications um, the way I think about plasma applications is that you know each um, you, it has to make sense for your use case. When you build an application, you have a specific business use case that you mm -hmm. were trying to tackle and keeping that in mind sometimes you know a very small part of your application is actually require any sort of decentralization. Sometimes, you know, majority of the time you can use a database, you can use, build your own server and, and such and such, and just rely, be reliant on the blockchain for mm -hmm. a certain like ESC20 token ledger, for example. Um, with that in mind for, in the context of the OMG network, so a, a PLAP, um, OMG network application would be any type of applications that anyone would build where they would like to have a more decentralized, um, scalable, high throughput uh, payments, right? So, so let's say hypothetically building an e-commerce web e-commerce website, yeah. then of course majority of your entire application stack is is a typical e-commerce website. However, if I would like to accept, um, you know, ESC twenty tokens or payments on on that 
application, then instead of just plugging it into Ethereum directly, you know, I would much prefer as a, as a merchant to plug into the OMG network. So in this way, my, my quote unquote plug is actually just a very small portion of my application, right? I'm not trying to squeeze all my business logic, all of my, the, all of my domain inside a, a, a blockchain, right? It's not, very, it's not a very pragmatic approach. So, so I see it more, more of that, more of the integration being a crucial part where uh, decentralized payment is required, mm -hmm. and you know the the applications, the developers are feel free to to use other technology uh, in the, as part of the stack. Very, very cool. Now, right now we have uh, plasma dogs. Plasma dogs. <laughs> now, plasma dogs is kind of like a retro style of game. But it's, it's obviously a test case for using Plasma in a gaming uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. Are there any conversations being had right now with getting something that's like, you know, groundbreaking kind of game actually running on, on Plasma? Because the, the cool retro games, they're fun, right? Mm -hmm. But then you look at like Fortnite or, you know, World of Warcraft or whatever else is kind of popular and you think, those are big games. Right. How can we bring blockchain to those? Are there any sort of conversations happening right now about bringing bigger games to Plasma? Um, yeah, well, I think when it comes to, originally Plasma Doc is a initiative that, you know, that uh, Omiseko and Horde uh, has that, okay, let's, we have this, a very, very early version of this OMG network. Let's see if we can integrate an application and, and Plasma Doc naturally become the application because um, Horde has that expertise on a um, building games and, and, and building like really engaging games. So, mm -hmm. so that naturally just, just naturally fit in as a use case where we provide infrastructure and they'll build this game application. Now, when it comes to um, bigger games or uh, it, in the, the term would be like a triple A games, right? Like, a, like an EA level Ubisoft yeah. like types of games. Yeah. Uh, it's still, I would say it's still quite a long way away. Uh, I think Omiseko, as we have, super focused on building this, uh, what I would consider uh, a decentralized financial rails. Um, we're quite agnostic to whoever is building on top. Uh, of course, it's, you know, it's, it's an op opportunity that we will not say, say no to if someone would like to build something on top, mm -hmm. especially something that would bring in high network volumes. But at the same time, this is not necessarily it within our focus. Uh, however, um, a more strategic partnership Let's say, for example, uh, a development uh, studio that is developing a game and would like to leverage this, this core technology for that specific part of, of their game, that they are more than welcome to use as well. Um, and, and for the perspective of Omise Go, we are just providing this network and making sure that it is running and it is up to the integrators to, to decide uh, what is a good fit for them. Very cool. Now, one thing that's been uh, put around with Obisei Go, or I guess the idea of Plasma, as well as the idea of infinite scalability, <laughs> right? I, I, love, yeah. I love the term, and I think there's, when people hear that, there's kind of a misconception of what infinite scalability <laughs> actually means. Right, yeah. Because it sounds really great on paper, but can, can you explain to us what, what is infinite scalability in terms of the Obisei Go network? Yeah, so the the term infinite scalability was, uh, it was, I think it was started to get coined when uh, a plasma design spec was, was, getting, um, was getting made, was getting drafted up. And that specific design is when, you know, when, I think when Joseph Poon started to come up with the whole plasma construction, they think, oh, what if, you know, as opposed to just having this layer two solution, you can have n layers of solution, right? So we can consider a second layer of plasma as a root chain for another plasma chain and, and, and so on and so forth. So that theoretically would bring you an infinite um, scalability because you can have an, an, an infinite amount of um, blockchain running on top of another blockchain. Yeah. Uh, so at the moment in the current research, um, that is not something that we, we, we're exploring yet. Uh, I don't think that is something uh, being currently being implemented by Plasma Group. However, there might be um, research findings that might help enable that, but it's still, it's still quite limited, I think. I, yeah. I would consider that uh, infinite scalability, a uh, uh, grand vision of that, that objective or the, um, the, 
the, the final lap of, of where this plasma construction could go, but it's not necessarily something that we'll see um, anytime soon, I don't think. I think it's better to have a, a grand vision than to have no vision at all, without a doubt. So Absolutely. Now, the final question I have for you is, what can we expect from Amise Go for the rest of 2019? I know mm -hmm. we, we don't want to necessarily put, you know, we're going to have this 100% by June mm -hmm. 1st, like, but what, what's kind of the, the general goals of the uh, company by the end of the year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think you did mention a really good point, right? So there is a um, tendency for the public to, uh, or even the business, to want, okay, what are the specific dates for each specific uh, goals? Uh, for a engineering, a software company, especially companies that are building on, on things that are, where there are a lot of unknowns, um, it's quite hard to promise that date, right? Because you don't, you don't <laughs> know what's, what's going to be happening in like the next months. Like even if you ask a startup, like, okay, when um, you said you're going to be, you know, um, when are you going to be deploying your applications? That, there's never really like a chance that they will know, right? And when it comes to a blockchain uh, company, a blockchain infrastructure, it's even harder because it's virtually impossible to roll back, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm, if I'm building an application, I can put it this weekend and I'll launch it and would fail in like, two hours. And I could always roll back, right? Yeah. And then it fix a bug, uh, roll it forward again, uh, test it again, fix something, and, and the cycle repeats. Uh, on the other hand, building the infrastructure do take quite a long time because you want to make sure that when you're dealing with people's money, you have to be extra, extra careful. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, with, uh, to answer your question, uh, in terms of the rest of the year, we do, we're looking forward to a lot of integrations. So having develop, more developers getting their hands on it, um, fixing a lot of the issues that, that we have and potentially will have, and making sure that our application is, uh, our, our solution is, is, is strong and uh, resilient, uh, and make sure that you know, the, the service is, stays up and, and serving, um, serving mock transactions or yeah. uh, things that are happening on, on RE. Um, and, and looking forward to, like, I'm personally looking forward to what kind of solutions other people would come up with on top of the OMG network. Uh, I think that's always one of the most interesting things, actually, because yeah. you can build this, right? And, right. You know, you could ask, I don't know, Vitalik a couple of years ago, like, hey, what do you think people are going to build on top of Ethereum? Like, well, maybe this, maybe that. But then people do all these other things. Like, I never thought about all those things. That's right. crazy. You see all these different implementations of ideas that are awesome and ingenuitive and really provide real value to businesses. And that's mm -hmm. something that as the, the bridge builders, yeah. you know, you can't uh, predict necessarily what how people are going to cross that bridge, right? Correct. So. That's what happens when you build a technology that enables uh, other technology, right? So, so this sort of tendency for um, the blockchain uh, blockchain technology to to not necessarily become a solution in itself, but it's an enablement for other types of potential solutions to be built on top of. And I think that, to me, is one of the most fascinating things. Very, very cool. Thank you so much for coming on and telling everyone a bit about what's going on with Mise Go these days. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lark. Have a good Cheers. one. Thank you.